Hey, what's up guys? This is Oakley and this is going to be the prologue campaign that we're going to be taking a look at. So I'll provide the links to the original video if you don't like the quality, but in any case, I just wanted to cover it real quick. Um, so basically, this is the campaigns of Rome against the Samnites. So this was early in Rome's history during the sort of formation of the Republic and then after. There were three wars with the Samnites. The Samnites were Highlanders, sort of in the highlands of the Apennines, and they're... Um, you know, ferocious warriors. They had spread to southeast Italy, and there were three wars that the Romans had with the Samnites. The first Samnite war was um, is basically where we pick off here. The Samnites attack Sidici, uh, and this is all according to Levi. And Sidici then sought help from uh, the Campani, and the Campani in turn sought Rome for assistance. And they said, "Please help us. The Samnites are moving." And Rome had already had an agreement with the Samnites and said, "No, we can't intervene." Uh, in any case, um, hearing that Capua and the Campani surrendered unconditionally to Rome gave up their territory to Roman control, and Roman said, "Okay, now it's uh, in terms of our honor. We have to defend these." helpless people essentially and so that's how Rome went into the war now the second war uh, was provoked uh, by Rome which uh, essentially established um, colonies in um, Samnite territory and later you know there were atrocious losses on both sides all these wars were back and forth uh, the second war was famous for the Caudian Forks in 321 BC where two consuls and their entire army were caught in a mountain pass the Samnites were going to slaughter them, but they decided to hostage and ransom them in any case. Um, but it, the Romans rewrote history because of this embarrassing defeat. And, uh, you know, then there's a third war later on. And in any case, here you can see we're sort of this in Campani and defending Capua. So this would be in the first war. Anyways, you can see here mission objectives given by the Senate. They'll give you territory. Now, this is probably not only going to be in this prologue campaign, but you can assume there will be Senate missions as well when you play the normal campaign and different missions that goes as well for different factions, etc. But you can see the Samnite forces to the southeast in blue, and they're kind of spreading around. And as I said, they were, you know, invading this area, and at every turn, essentially, what happened is the Romans were aggressive, right? They were expanding everywhere, and the Etrusc or the Etruscans were doing the same, and the Samnites were doing the same. The difference is when the Samnites would try and invade a territory, Rome would all of a sudden, you know, ally with them, and so the Samnites you know, all of a sudden found themselves at war with the people they weren't intending to. And so that's kind of how Rome handled these wars. The um, That's essentially the politics of it. Um, and here you can see one of the legions there that we selected, and they're going to go ahead and engage in a battle. Now I wanted to pause it right here just to show a couple things. So you can see the banner there is flashing back and forth between the skull, and above there are the ravens, so that, the ravens, excuse me, or vultures. So that means there's attrition. You will suffer attrition apparently if you're in enemy territory, so that's an example of it. Anyways, here you can see the main forces of Silanus engaging in the Samnite forces to the right with reinforcements numbering in, you know, the numbers of around 840. And these uh, troops will be kind of similar troops, both were um, large, relatively large empires on the uh, Italian peninsula, and they both were pretty developed, very militaristic cultures in any case. And uh, as I said, in the wars, you would have seen many reversals back and forth. Romans celebrated, you know, multiple triumphs. You know, we'll grant them that. Um, you know, celebrating their victories back in Rome, and in any case, they ended up winning all of the wars, and that led to their eventual rule of the peninsula. I wanted to point out right here, sort of the recruitment of troops. So, recruitment, as you know, happens basically an army in the field. You don't have to get your troops from the city. So, what happens is you go into muster mode, and in muster mode, then you can choose from your various troops. Uh, here we have an example of a troop, uh, you know, taking one turn to recruit, but, you know, you can imagine there would be some that take two or three turns. In any case, when you're in muster mode, you can't move. If you do move, it cancels whatever you're building, so you have to wait till the end of the turn. And I think that's a good balancing factor. You can't just recruit something and move on. You have to stay there and, you know, as it says, muster the troops, stay and commit, and then recruit them. So that makes you susceptible. You can't really move out. And uh, in any case, when you recruit troops, it's based off where you're located. That applies not only for the, the upgrades and the armories and stuff like that, so the quality of the troops, but also in terms of mercenaries based off what lo uh, location you are in. Um, anyways, you can see here I wanted to highlight again the banner changes. So before I thought banners were customizable, you know, they still might be, but what it seems like the banner here changes based off what the army is doing. So, for example, this is in uh, muster mode, but there's a couple different modes you can be in. Defensive allows you to sort of improve um, your defensive bonuses, it builds you a fort. Force march allows you to walk further, but again, if you're attacked, your troops are exhausted, and you have the um, 
the baggage train especially uh, you know vulnerable then you can go into raid mode which is when you're in enemy territory it decreases your upkeep muster mode we just saw and then ambush increases your ambushing potential in a particular territory and that's symbolized by that eye that you see on banners oftentimes so in any case those are the various modes um, you know I might have missed one um, and that'll also apply to fleets fleets can go on defensive or raid mode etc so that's another dynamic that you're gonna have to contend with in any case, you can see during the, the interim between turns, you get this cool kind of fog of war effect, literally with the fog, and you can see your enemy moving around. Now, it's not the sort of fast-forwarded pace of people walking. People turn into horses, and it's, uh, you know, not that that's natural, but it looks better than people, you know, walking briskly through the campaign at unnatural speeds. Um, in any case, here you can see the technologies that are going to be available to you. So you can see at the bottom, the UI is pretty minimalistic when you select things. It's all going to be centered at the bottom, and you hop between these various icons. So there's going to be two techno technological, technological trees, excuse me, civic and military. So on the left, it's going to be military. Researching supply reforms essentially will unlock three of the military ones. And so the three military ones are management, tactics, and siege. Management basically helps increase um, the, the morale of your troops, the defense of your troops. It, I'm guessing it decreases your upkeep. Tactics would be special formations and abilities that you unlock, so maybe Testudo and stuff like that, or a wedge, flying wedge formation for cavalry. And siege, I'm guessing, you in order to use special siege works or to get deduced rates on them or to be able to have more, um, you would have to research into siege technologies. Um, you know, that might also include attacking during sieges, but also defending during sieges. So maybe on the defense, you'll have, you'll be able to hold out longer if you're good at sieging. Um, and on the uh, sort of economic side, or I should say um, civil side, you have economy, philosophy, and construction. Economy is all about, um, again, kind of the parallel to management. It increases the benefits you get from taxes and stuff like that. Philosophy is more cultural driven, and construction is going to be, of course, having to do with buildings, the rate you can build them. Um, their costs and stuff like that. So you can see um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the UI and in terms of these three main categories for everything. That's I like the take they're, uh, they're moving this game in. It seems pretty simple and straightforward. You know, you just got to get used to it. And then once you do, it should be relatively easy to handle. And that's basically what this prologue campaign is all about, is getting you used to the campaign, getting you used to the different things. Even if you are a Total War veteran, this will all be pretty new. And I think it is relatively simplified compared to previous games. So hopefully for those of you who are picking up on this for the first time, it'll be relatively easy um, you know, to understand. In any case, you can see here, I'm kind of glossing over the various things. Uh, civil, as I said, with the various um, subcategories that you can unlock as you do research. Research takes time, and then after you've researched it, you get the benefits, uh, and then you get to go on and research more things. In any case, talk about repair and building. You know, buildings can get damaged. I thought that was pretty cool how the tiles get cracked when it's damaged. So the options you can see there at the bottom that he's about to click on is going to be repair. That costs money um, and you can damage buildings through either uh, military action or subterfuge and agent actions. And if you look at the symbol on top where it's kind of switching between buildings, I think that allows you to switch up the building slot. Say you don't want a temple anymore and you want more of a, a military facility. That's how you would go ahead and do that. Now each building has different effects on not only what you can recruit and do, it also has effects on your overall food for the population in that city and so that's something you have to keep in mind. Now when your city grows you can then expand it, you're given these building points that you can expend on um, expanding your city or repairs and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool how cities have their own resources and their own management. So. While that's an additional step that we haven't seen in previous Total War games, it has been simplified in this UI and in terms of the management of your entire, um, I should say, provinces and regions through this little bar at the bottom which shows the various towns inside of them. And again, once you conquer all the cities in that province, you are able to enact edicts that have additional benefits. Um, so again, you know, there's a lot more to this and I'm just happy to bring you guys the details. In case that's a workshop right there, you can see plus 5% armor, plus 5% for melee attack, uh, and it un unlocks recruitment for the ballista and the scorpion, and that'll be available to any troops that are recruited or upgraded within the bounds of sort of Capua's uh, city limits. Anyways, this is basically the modes that you have for your city, and I'll go ahead and show that a bit in slow motion and uh, a little bit closer up as well. So what you see is, this is the button you're going to press to do the different modes. So here is... First, you know, with the fort, uh, once you're in defensive mode, you get a fort plus 50% reinforcement range. So if you're in a fort, you can kind of go guard a region so you have more range. 
plus two barricades, plus one set of fireballs, plus one spike traps, and plus two sets of Sudas caltrops. Now the caltrops are what are at the top left. Those are anti-cavalry things that will slow them down. And it's cool that you can set up traps and fireballs and barricades and all this stuff. Um, and plus 20% melee defense. But on the other hand, you can't move. And the cost... 50% uh, to your total movement speed in order to remain in that stance. But in any case, if you find a defensible position, go ahead and lock up in either defensive or ambush mode and reap the benefits. You know, I think that's really cool. In any case, thanks so much for, you know, staying tuned. There'll be more videos in the near future. See you guys next time.